Now let me ask lecturer Asim Mehdi Al-Hilali to come to the platform to present his paper on translation assessments of the Ahl al-Bayt purification verse in the Holy Quran. My research paper is entitled uh, Translation Assessment of the Ahl al-Bayt Purification Verse. I appear in the Holy Quran into English. Um, the contents of the presentation involves the following introduction, historical context of Ayat al Tathir, methodology, analysis of the translation, implications and interpretations, and finally the conclusion. I begin with the abstract. As you know, the purification verse of the Ahlul Bayt, literally people of the house, of the Prophet's house in the, in the glorious Quran, has enjoyed extraordinarily significant importance in both the doctrine and the jurisprudence of Islamic faith. This verse, also known as the Ayat at tathir has received different interpretations and translations across different linguistic and cultural contexts. <laughs> the present study attempts to carry out a comprehensive evaluation of the translations of the ayat purifying the Ahlul Bayt in the Holy Quran. Several English translations of the ayat are analyzed in terms of their religious interpretation, linguistic accuracy, cultural meanings, and theological implications. By examining the English uh, translations of this ayah, the research endeavors to explicate the semantic value and interpretive arguments deep rooted in rendering, <coughs> in rendering the meaning of this important Quranic ayah. Moreover, the effect of various translation approaches on the understanding and interpretation of the ayah within the various societies all over the world will be explored alike in order to provide a, a clearer understanding of the ayah. In the introduction, it's stated that the purification ayah of the Ahlul Bayt in the Holy Quran, also known as Ayat Tathir, is a central tenet within Shia Islam, signifying the purity and sanctity of the Prophet Muhammad's household. This ayah found in Surah Al-Ahzab 33, 33, has been subject to various interpretations and translations reflecting the diversity of Islamic scholarship and linguistic context. The purpose of the research paper is to critically assess different translations of the Ahlul Bayt purification ayah, examining their linguistic fidelity, cultural resonance, and theological implications. Uh, as for the historical context of Ayat al tathir it's stated that to understand the significance of the Ahlul Bayt purification ayah, it's essential to delve into its historical context within early Islamic history. The ayah was revealed during the event of the Muwahala, where the Prophet Muhammad engaged in a spiritual challenge with the Christians of Najran. The inclusion of his family particularly Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein in the Mubahala emphasizes their elevated status within Islam and underscores their spiritual purity. This research paper employs a comparative analysis approach to evaluate translations of the Ahlul Bayt purification ayah. Three translations into English will be examined where the focus is on prominent Quranic translators, uh, including Abdullah Yusuf Ali, Muhammad Asad, and Marmaduke Pekthal. 
the assessment will consider linguistic accuracy, semantic nuances, and theological interpretations. As for the analysis of translations, as I said earlier, uh, the, the, there are three translations included in the research or in the analysis. The first one is Abdullah Yusuf Ali's translation. Abdullah Yusuf Ali translates Ayat al tathir as follows. Allah doth, doth only will to keep away the uncleanness from you, O people of the household, and to purify you a thorough purification. Ali 2000, page 918. Ali's translation highlights moral immunity and purification for the Ahlul Bayt for grounding the sp spiritual interpretation of the ayah rather than providing a physical interpretation. <coughs> Muhammad Asad's translation, uh, on the other hand, opts to offer a nuanced interpretation of Tathir Ayah, and his translation reads as follows. God desires but to remove all uncleanness from you, or you members of the Prophet's household, and to purify you to utmost purity. Uh, Asad 2000, 2003, page 643. Here, what's emphasized by Asad is the sp spiritual purity of Ahlul Bayt, foregrounding their dignified status within the nation of Islam. Yet his, yet his translation is not literal, as the case should be, when rendering ambiguous or controversial expressions and texts where preserving the meaning of the original is the safe side that translators should take to avoid bias to a specific interpretation or interpretations. Uh, the third translation is by Marmaduke Pictel, uh, and he presents a more literal rendering of the ayah, where he says, where he states, Allah's wish is but to remove any cleanness far from you, O folk of the household, and cleanse you with a thorough cleansing. Pixel 2001, page 408. Pixel's translation includes a clear drawback in selecting the verb cleanse for translating the Arabic verb yutahir, as the verb cleans suggests that the physical aspect is intended, not the spiritual one. Yet on the whole, Pictel's translation seems the most neutral, where no intervention is made, literal translation is used, and for formal correspondence is maintained. Thus, target language audience are granted the chance to understand the original form structure and content as far as possible, and are left the free choice to find out the most appropriate interpretation by themselves. As for the implications and interpretations, the analysis of the translations reveals divergent interpretations of the Ahlul Bayt purification ayah ranging from spiritual purification to physical cleansing. These vari variations underscore the complexity of Quranic translation and its effect on theological understanding within Islamic communities. Furthermore, the differing, the, the differing interpretation of Ayat al-Tathir highlight the theological distinctions uh, between Sunni and Shia Islam regarding the status and the role of the Prophet's family. As for the conclusion, it states that the translation assessment of the Ahlul Bayt purification, conducting a comparative analysis of the selected translations, 
the study underscores that since the ayah is a controversial one among the den denominations of Islam, faithfulness to the source language through adhering to literalness, maintaining formal correspondence between the source language and the target language, uh, and selecting the closest tar target language equivalents in translation by Quran translators is the recipe for dealing with the controversial eyes of the Holy Quran. This is so because it's the most likely decision for preserving both the form and the content of the source language text and conveying the original message to the target language audience with, without bias, intervention, or change. By deepening our understanding of this ayah, we gain insight into the spiritual significance of the Prophet's household within Islamic tradition. Thank you, Mr. Asim. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah.